Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to scan a shed using a drone and then we'll stitch it together and uh, make a 3D model out of it. But before we start, I want to tell you about the introduction to 3D modeling class that I created at the Academy of Animated Art. It's a beginner class. If you've never taken Maya before, if you've never opened the 3D application, you know, this is the class for you. My tutorials on YouTube are a little more advanced for beginners. So this is a perfect class to get you started into 3D modeling. Uh, please check it out and let me know how you like it. So let's get started. So first we're going to use a software called Reality Capture. This used to be very expensive software. Epic bought Reality Capture and now you can get it free on the Epic Store. Uh, once you install it, you'll see it in the library. You can just launch it from there and you just log in using the account that you used to log in for the uh, Epic Store. Uh, this is Reality Capture. It looks complicated. It's actually really easy to use. Uh, you just need a couple steps and that's it. Now I did make a new project in Maya because I like to keep things organized and Maya uh, does a really good job organizing 3D projects. So I made a project called Shed Scan and then I made a folder inside the project called uh, Reality Scan and then I have an export folder that I made and a photos folder. In the photos I placed all of the photos that I took uh, with the drone. So you can see there's a bunch of photos in here, it's about 140 and uh, it's just a shed. So let's bring them in. So under workflow, you just need to click the folder icon. That's the first thing. And then we'll go to projects, my shed scan project, reality scan photos and select. You'll see the photos start to load. Uh, you can just uh, click, click in here and then, you know, use the arrow keys to cycle through it to look at the photos. And you can see this is the path I took with the drone. So I just kind of flew it around. Now, um, I used the button on the controller, just the photo button that set the drone to capture photos and that's it. I just went through and take a bunch of photos. It's really quick. There's an app you can get that can give you, um, uh, you can plot a path around an object to scan. But uh, where I'm scanning, there's a lot of trees. I don't want to make a, a path for the drone to fly and then hit a tree or something. So I just did it by hand. You can see me in the background, you know, flying the drone. It's pretty simple. Once that's done, you want to go to alignment once the photos are in and make a draft. Okay, so now here we have our initial uh, alignment. And you can see you got almost all the photos. One photo is missing and that's okay. So let's do a full alignment. And it's going to be rotated weird, so but that's okay. We'll fix that later. So just click the align images. Okay, so that's done. And you can see um, it's kind of hard to see what's going on because we have all of these uh, lines here. Now, if you go to view the last view, you can turn off residuals. Residuals are just like the direction the camera is pointing. And all of these white dots, those are actually our drone locations and uh, where we took the photos. Uh, and we need to align this because right now you can see it's a little crazy looking. So let's do that. So under uh, tools, there's a set ground rotation and set ground plane, set region and ground plane. I'm going to first clear the region. So just click the little uh, arrow here and click clear region. And now when you click set ground plane, this will give you a manipulator. Now we can just take the rotation circles here and just rotate it and try to line it up as close as we can to the ground plane. All right, that looks great. And you can see the pictures that I took with the drone. So basically I've, uh, what I like to do is, is make these like vertical uh, passes. So I just, I don't rotate the drone. I just set it low and then go up and take a photo uh, each time. And I do that all around. And then I do one from the bottom, uh, from as close to the roof as possible. And then I uh, fly up and then also try to get as many corners as possible. So once you do that, you'll get pretty good coverage with your photos. So that's ready. Now we need to set a reconstruction region because you can't reconstruct the whole thing. It's going to be too much. So we'll just set up our reconstruction region this way. You just press the button and it tries to estimate where it thinks most of the detail is. And of course we don't need all of that detail. So we're going to go close to the shed. Now this is going to be the longest process and that is under mesh model here. We're going to click normal detail and that's going to mesh the model for us. The back had a lot of uh, shadow in it, so that's why that looks that way. It's not really a big deal, so we're good here. 
so there's a couple steps we need to do to make sure that um, the next steps uh, work well. And we need to first simplify it and then we need to unwrap our UVs. Now to do that, you can go to tools, the last tools menu here. And right here, there's a simplify tool. Now when you click it, uh, it doesn't do anything yet because you have to set your uh, triangle count. So I'm going to set it to 2 million. So just, you know, put a 2 and then 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then click simplify. So it's done simplifying and you can see even though it's 2 million polygons, it looks basically the same. But we can actually check. So under the component here, you can click the plus and you can see the initial model. So the initial model was 24 parts and it was 28.1 million triangles. The new model is five parts, but it's only two million. So now let's unwrap it. So here under mesh model, there is a unwrap right here. So click unwrap and then click unwrap again in the settings here. It's going to be pretty quick. So now the UVs are unwrapped and we can texturize. So texturize is going to take a little longer. What it does is it's going to take all of the cameras and project the texture onto the new unwrapped lower resolution geometry. So here's the textured model. Looks really good. So there are a couple ways to preview uh, the 3D model here, right? So if you go to view, uh, if you want to see it uh, like just the vertices, you can press vertices, then there's solid, which is just the uh, model, and then sweet is with everything turned on. All right, now we can go back to mesh model and export. So I also like to save, so I'm gonna do file save as, and inside our project, shed scan, reality scan, just in here, I'm gonna call this shed scan and save. And now we can export. So under export in mesh model, we can click dense mesh export. And this will export the model with texture. And I'll put it in the export folder that I made. And the name here doesn't matter because we're going to be working in Maya anyway. Click save. Now the settings here are basically we want to do UDIM texture set. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be one tile anyway. And uh, that's about it. That's all we need to set here. Click export. Now let's take a look at the model in Maya. Just go to file, import. I already have the project set, so it's going to take me to scenes, but we're in reality scan, export, and here's our OBJ. Click import. Okay, it's in here. Press six, and you'll see it with the texture. Now, I'm going to change the background, Alt B, like that. And if we go into lighting, you can set it to flat lighting. And then you'll see just the, the model with no uh, lighting information. So we're going to see any specular. We can press five and look at just the geometry. Now, if you're looking at it and it's too bright, that's because Maya 2025, they changed their uh, materials, the default materials. So the default material here, if we press Control A, we can see it's actually a fong. So uh, Maya, now Lambert's fongs and blends get blown out. So we can change this to uh, a standard surface. So I'm going to open up the hypershade here and make a standard surface material. So right here, standard surface. And we can uh, also graph uh, the material that's on the object, on the OBJ. You can see there's a file node. And if we take the... Um, we just middle drag the new standard surface that we made into view here. We can just select it and then middle drag uh, this. So with this selected, with the standard surface two selected, we can middle drag the the fuse here, uh, the fuse texture into color like that. Now if I select my shed, click assign viewport material, what's going to happen is it's not going to be uh, like blown out anymore but it's gonna be really shiny. So we just need to go back into the standard surface here and for roughness, set the roughness to one, like that. So now it's not shiny. And if we press six, we'll see the texture. And that's it. We can also turn on flat lighting and this is how it should look properly. 
Alright, so that's that's it really. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can use this in Unreal. Uh, you can bring it uh, into Unreal as an OBJ or you can export as an FBX out of Maya. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to uh, retopologize this shed and then project the textures uh, in Capture Reality back onto the retopologized model. And that's really great for making a like a production ready model using a scan. So stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.